Before I start, this video was brought to you by the letter D and the letter H. Why? Because it's my video, so I say so. Plus, it starts in Dre Higby. Get it? I should just start the video now. You read the title right. I'm going to review the very first Sesame Street episode, which was released back in 1969. So yeah, a very long time ago. And you would think out of all the lost episodes of Sesame Street because, you know, it's been on the air for like, what, 52 years after this recording? It's a lot easy to find the first episode. Now, keep in mind, this is the first episode of Sesame Street. And throughout all these years, this first episode means that a lot of things have changed throughout. Because keep in mind, this show has been on for like a long time. So in this first episode, there was no Almo, Abby Cadabby, or all those characters that you know nowadays. Nope. Back then, there was Big Bird, Oscar the Grouch, Ernie and Bert, and the Cookie Monster. And even Kermit the Frog. Now, if you look back at Season 1 skits, you will notice that the monsters look incredibly different and kind of more creepier in a way. Believe it or not, Jim Henson, the creator of the Muppets, at first didn't want his puppet characters to be in a children's show because he wants the Muppets to be a flick more for adults. Or for all ages. But then he thought, eh, this show will last for a couple of seasons, so why not? Even though it's still going on to this day. Now, before I start this review, I want you to know that I'm not going to be showing the video clips of the episode. I'm just going to show you the stills of it because I'm too worried about copyright reasons. But you can still find the first episode online. I might even leave a link down to it if you're interested in watching. But enough of this chit chat, let's get started with this. This is my review of the very first Sesame Street episode. So the plot in the first episode is that a little girl named Sally has moved to Sesame Street. And a man named Gordon is showing her around the place. And this is also a very interesting way to introduce your main characters, like Bob, Mr. Hooper, Susan, uh, Big Bird. Oh yeah, speaking of Big Bird. Um, his first appearance is seems to be that he's supposed to be more of a not-so-bright character. I mean, nowadays, he's the six-year-old, eight-foot yellow bird that we know and love. But back then, he was a bit more dopey. And he even kind of talked in a dopey voice, and he had a more smaller head. Maybe they were trying to make him look like a real bird or something. I don't know. Also, it's kind of weird how he throws in this line saying, I nearly lay an egg right here on Sesame Street. And that's kind of weird since I never seen Big Bird lay an egg before. And if I did, that would look awkward. Then Gordon and Sally hear some singing, and that's when we get introduced to Ernie and Bert. And they actually look kind of the same. I mean, Bert does. Ernie looks a bit different, like his nose is a more kind of a dark red, pinkish, purplish color. Also, in season one, Ernie's striped shirt is actually more purple and orange than the red and blue that we're all familiar with. Anyways, Bert tells Ernie to get out of the tub because other people are waiting to take a bath. For example, Solomon Glendy. I know I got that name wrong, but what ifs. And now we get to the first cartoon short in this show, where it's about a kid named Solomon Glendy. Did I get it right this time? Who, throughout all the days of the week, only watch one part of his body. And then, gets dirty again. Honestly, I don't know why he wouldn't just take a shower. I mean, that would get you cleaner a lot faster. But, what whatevs. And then there's a short film of people and animals washing themselves. Back in the apartment, Ernie tells Bert that he ought to take a bath more often, because then he wouldn't be such a grouch. He then break out in a dance number, where he tells everybody to wash different parts of their body. And then we get to this skit about these... Many dots that I think is supposed to be in a pattern or something. I actually don't really get this skit. I know it's probably trying to educate something, but I just can't put my mind on it. And it appears again a few times in the same episode, but I'm just going to talk about them here so I wouldn't have to do that. Next, there's a film about the number three, where it shows about three things that kids have. It's also the appearance of that classic chef falling down gag. It's hilarious. Back on the street. Susan prepares milk and cookies for Gordon and Sally to drink and eat. And as we see Sally drinking her milk, we get a little short film about where milk comes from. However, I don't think short film is the right thing to call this, as it goes on for like, what, six minutes? But it does show some interesting facts about where milk comes from. And even the song and the music in the background is really peaceful and comforting. After that, we get introduced to one of the neighborhood's most grumpiest characters, Oscar the Grouch. And, as you can see, he is a lot different. Main thing is that he's orange. That's right. Back then, he was actually orange. 
instead of the green character that we all know and love. But at least his personality never changed. He's still the grumpy character that we all know. We didn't get a short film about a claymation stop motion of characters talking about things that start with the letter S. And usually I don't try to criticize stop motion, but this is actually kind of creepy looking. Then Fally meets up with a woman who tells her how she has to go under the string whenever she's knitting something. And then we get to another <coughs> short film of some kids going under stuff. And yeah, just like that milk film, this also goes on for a little while. Just be glad it's not one of those Teletubbies TV events where after they show it, they say, again, again, and then it plays the exact same clip. Then there's a short cartoon about a girl named Alice Greatway Goody Shoes, who is a terribly clever girl, and she teaches you about some stuff. And these shorts were mostly around season one. Then we get a fun Muppet sketch where Gordon puts some faces on some anything Muppets, and then makes them into a happy family. Like a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, and even an uncle. Then they start singing about consider yourself part of the family, which can get a good smile on your face whenever you hear it. We didn't cut the inside of Mr. Hooper's store, where even Ernie makes an appearance. Susan asks Mr. Hooper for two cartons of milk. And that's where we get to the number two sketch, which is the same thing as the number three sketch. But it's the number two. It then comes back on the street where Susan talks to a little boy about the number two, and then we see a little short film about two animals. It then cut to another short film about the number two, which makes Ernie cries in tears of joy because it was just so wonderful. Then when Bert tells him that the letter E film is coming up next, Ernie starts to cry again because that's his favorite letter in the whole alphabet. I mean, it does start with Ernie after all, so I can understand that. We didn't get to, in my opinion, a very beautiful sketch about things that starts with the letter E. What I really like about this sketch is that the music is really beautiful. Back in the apartment, Bob is helping Gordon to hang up a picture. This says that thank goodness Buddy and Jim didn't help him. And then we get to one of the first sketches of Buddy and Jim. Who's Buddy and Jim? Well, don't be surprised that you never heard of them before because they only appeared back in season one with a few skits. They were mostly played as the duo of the dumb guy, smart guy routine. And in this skit, they're trying to put up a picture. It then cut back to the apartment where Bob, Sally, Gordon, and even Kermit are surrounded to see a fun trick that Bob can do with a dollar bill that he has. And he makes it into a W. And speaking of W's, Gordon asks Kermit to do one of his lectures about the letter W. While Kermit gets prepared, we then get to another short film about Wanda the Witch. And the cartoon has a lot of words that begins with W. After that, Kermit then gives his lecture about the letter W. However, this is also the appearance of Cookie Monster, who seems to be very hungry and will probably eat anything. Because after he ate the letter W, he then tries to eat Kermit. Luckily, Kermit's escaped, but that's kind of unsettling, especially how beloved Cookie Monster is nowadays. But, fun fact, during Season 1, he was actually not called Cookie Monster. Actually, he didn't have much of a name, he was just called Monster. Then we get another W short cartoon film about a worm. That's... That's literally it. There's nothing really much to say about that. Now back to part two of Kermit's lecture where he tries again to explain about the letter W. However, the letter W seems to be sentient and it tries to attack Kermit. Then Susan sings one of the most familiar songs of the show, one of these things is not like the others. And as you can see, the letter W does not belong with all those number twos. And then it's time to say goodbye. And Sally talks about all the things that she learned today on Sesame Street. Including the number two. I bring that up because Ernie cries again about it. Luckily, Susan gives him the number two. But then when they mention the letter E, he cries again and none of them has an E. And that's the ending of the very first Sesame Street episode. Man, that is a lot to talk about. I mean, considering that Sesame Street episodes are usually an hour long. I mean, nowadays it's only a half an hour long. But still, that's a lot to talk about. Just for one episode. But what do I think of it? Honestly, I think it's really good. I think it's a good way to start the show. And it's a good way to introduce the characters and the main show. And to think that these characters who looked different back then, slowly but surely started to become the characters that we all know and love today. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was probably a long one, but you know, Sesame Street episodes are kind of long, so yeah. But I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time.